Hello everyone, welcome to the Marine Ecomed Erasmus Plus project and to this second LDL. I am Anastasia, I am an educator specialized in environmental education and together with my colleagues we have worked on part of this second LDL. We represent the Greek NGO partner of Marine Ecomed project and this particular module concerns the historical interaction of human communities and coastal environment to support ecosystem-based management. In this module, you are going to be introduced to the relation developed between local communities and the marine environment through centuries. You are also going to learn about different services that marine ecosystems provide to humans throughout history and how these services can change in order for you to understand this interaction of human communities and coastal and marine environment and ecosystems. Interaction between human communities and marine ecosystems counts as many years as humanity itself. Understanding human relation to the ocean and its ecosystems requires to examine historical data over a very long period of time. This historical data obtained from marine historical ecology and marine environmental history can be translated into marine policy development and can also affect management actions. Historical data are in fact knowledge gained from the past that has a great impact in ecosystem-based management and can also ensure more efficient policy development. So, in this particular module, we're going to examine some historical information that can support in the implementation of efficient ecosystem-based management. The interaction between human communities and marine ecosystems is circular. This means that humans not only are affected by the marine environment, but also affect the marine ecosystems. An example of this could be fishing communities. Marine populations shape human communities that make a living from the services and the goods provided by the ecosystems. On the other side, human activities such as fishing have an effect on marine populations of targeted species or in the case of overfishing. So, historical knowledge leads to a better understanding of both the long-term changes of these affected species, but also of different human aspects that affect ecosystem. So, taking this knowledge into consideration can support us to set realistic management targets concerning marine environmental issues. In this module, we are going to examine this historical interaction in order to support ecosystem-based management. First, we are going to provide you information about the first prehistoric and ancient interaction between human communities and marine services through some key human activities in order to indicate human relation to the marine environment. Then, we are going to provide you information about the historical interaction between human activities and some key species of the Mediterranean. Particularly, we are going to talk about human interaction with sharks from the Halcolithic period until the 20th century and the change of value of sharks that occurred during the 20th century. Another key species we are going to examine is the Mediterranean monk seals and its interaction with the human communities in the Mediterranean. Our main sources for these prehistoric and ancient interactions are myths, ancient art, iconographic representations and classical literature. As you can see on your left, there is a reed boat that used for fishing activities. So, there is a petroglyph that indicates both that people used to fish and it is known that people used to make boats according to the materials that were available to their area. In the above picture, you can see a fish monger. In this case, the knife or the table were possibly made from whale bones. It is known that whale bones were used for people to make tools or furniture. What is known for dolphins 
is that apart uh, from people eating them, they were used in order to product oil or drugs. Classical mythology and iconographic traditions are full of references to mythical and real creatures of the sea, which enables us to understand prehistoric and ancient human perceptions about marine animals. Cetaceans were regarded as fish until ancient times when Aristotle was the first to categorize them separ separately as he observed their differences to fish. In mythology, whales were depicted as dangerous monsters probably due to their huge size. As we mentioned before, whales were also used in order to make tools and furniture, and they were also used for their oil, so they were valuable commodities of that period. Dolphins, on the other hand, were regarded as guardians of the mariners from ancient Greeks, according to Greek mythology, so people refrained from slaying them except for medical reasons. As we have already mentioned, interactions between human communities and marine environment are probably as old as the first time community members face the sea. These interactions mainly, mainly serve human needs, including human need for nutrition, either by consuming marine animals or by producing oil. Another need that is served is the production of tools from using parts of marine animals, such as their bones. People also use the leather of marine animals. Coastal communities were the first to develop trade as they used to exchange products through sea. Also, they used to move from one place to another in order to either exchange these products or even to transport weapons during periods of war. Let us not forget that marine environment provides places for recreational activities, from swimming to fishing, for example. We are now going to examine the case of sharks in the Mediterranean. As the Mediterranean Sea represents one of the areas in which the most ancient evidences of interaction between humans and sharks are available. First of all, sharks were trade products since the Halcolithic period in the Eastern Mediterranean. Their remains are found in different ancient trade locations and in markets that were located from far from the coastline. Ancient people also used to eat shark meat and there are references that present the preparation of shark cooking. Our sources about ancient marine fisheries mainly come from ancient Greeks and Romans, probably because they were the cultures that first developed marine fisheries. So what is known is that during the early Bronze Age, fishing communities have, had developed techniques that allowed people to capture sharks. They had also developed specific tools such as tridents. During the Upper Paleolithic period, interactions between humans and sharks became more evident through demonstrations. Our main sources are paintings and mosaics depicting fishing activities and coastal marine megafauna. As you can see on your right, there are many fish and marine animals depicted in a Roman mosaic, and among them there are three different shark species. In the red cycle, you can see the shark species Torpedo Torpedo. In the green cycle, you can see the shark species Ciliorinus tellaris. And in the yellow cycle, you can see the shark species Ciliorinus canicula. These demonstrations prove the importance of marine species for coastal communities, as well as the significant interaction between human activities and the marine ecosystems. The first ancient Greek historian, Herodotus, refers to seas as full of sharks, proving the quantity of coastal marine fauna populations. Another ancient Greek, Aristoteles, was the first to accurately describe sharks and categorize them according to their main characteristics. During the Roman age, nursery areas, interactions with divers and seasonal migration were described through the observations of that period. 
During the Renaissance, a new topic of science developed ichthyology. Ichthyology included shark studies. Until 1558, 13 species of sharks have been described in great detail. Wild sharks were singled out as man eaters since the 18th century, and in different areas, different species of sharks were called as man eaters. So, shark fisheries date back to the early Bronze Age, along with the establishment of fishing communities in the Mediterranean. After the Second World War, fishing techniques were developed. This led to the shark species overexploitation and to their depletion since 1975. Shark species are caught through either direct or indirect fishing. Direct fishing targets shark species in order for people to exploit their meat, their skin, their liver for oil and their fins. Indirect fishing is the ex accidental catch of sharks, which is known as by cuts. By cuts counts more than 50% of the total cuts of sharks. On the right, you can see the total number of uh, different species of sharks that were caught from 1950 to 1995. After the end of the Second World War, apart from the development of fishing, fishing techniques, coasts became a popular destination for vacation travel and were used for recreation. This increased the public's contact to sharks. The use of mass media was also increased at that period of time. The novel Jaws became a bestseller and the subsequent movie appeared. This supported the public opinion and also supported culling policies against sharks. So, according to this perception that was said against sharks, sharks were thought as monstrous intentional human eaters and many organized actions against them were really usual. Uh, these actions included sharks hunts, sharks derbies and tournaments, recreational shark fishing, or in some cases, beach nets were used in order to keep sharks away from the coastline. Another threat that sharks face nowadays is uh, mislabeling. Mislabeling is when sellers change the name of the product. In the case of sharks, this may happen either intentionally or erroneously. When sharks are a product of bycats that have been caught accidentally, their price is low. So, sellers change the name of shark products in order to raise their price. Another case is when sharks are products of illegal trade because they are protected species which cannot be sold legally. Many consumers are informed about avoiding shark meat, so in these cases sellers change the name of the products in order to overcome this resistance of the consumers. In some cases, shark products just haven't, haven't been identified correctly. So, this is the case of erroneous mislab mislabeling. Mislabeling, either intentional or, or erroneous, leads to shark consumption, which promotes the consumption of threatened species. In the first picture, you can see fishing products, including shark species, from the 17th century. In the picture beneath, you can see a protected species of shark which was caught before some weeks in a Greek island. The average of shark catch data in the period 2000 until 2008 are shown on your right. As you can see, the only data comes from Spain regarding the Mediterranean countries. Several countries which are known to catch sharks do not report their catches to fowl. FAO is the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. In some other countries, there are 
gaps between catch data and export data, which indicates that there is significant underreporting because of illegal trade or protected species, or because there is a lack of appropriate laws and mechanisms to support and enforce these procedures. According to IC research, this is the reason why there is lack of data coming from Greece too. Sharks are very vulnerable to overexploitation because of their life history characteristics, which show low reproductive and growth rates and long lifespans. This means that they show slow growth, late maturity, and small numbers of young. This characteristic, along with human activities during the centuries and mainly overfishing, have driven sharks to the recent condition in the Mediterranean Sea. Based on the latest report of IUCN, half of the 50 shark species f that are found in the Mediterranean face an elevated risk of extinction. Twelve of them have been characterized as critically endangered, seven of them as endangered, and six of them have been characterized as vulnerable, according to this report of IUCN. The vulnerability of sharks and the dangers that they face have led to the change in public's perception towards them and in the change of use and their value since 1990. Nowadays, there are measures to protect them and they are considered to be profitable for the tourism industry. Some of the laws that have been enforced and measures that have been taken include the FAO International Plan of Action for Conservation and Management of Sharks. Furthermore, the ban of finning, which is a human activity cruel, which includes the cut of sharks fin in order for the fins to be consumed. And uh, these measures also include environmental agreements for biodiversity conservation and other national and regional regulations. Public interest towards sharks and the development of new equipment has also led to the development of shark activities, including observation of sharks from boats, snorkeling, scuba diving, uh, observation of sharks from cages and photography. So, during the last years, the use of sharks has changed from a consumable one to a non-consumable one. After sharks, we are going to examine another key species which interacts with coastal communities in the Mediterranean Sea, the Mediterranean monk seal, known as Monachus monachus. Whereas public perception towards sharks is mainly shaped from mass media, public perception towards marine mammals and monachus monachus is shaped from their relations to fisheries. The Mediterranean monk seal usually damages fishing equipment and this causes the loss of cuts for fishers, which can be translated in loss of significant amounts of money and time. On the other hand, uh, Monachus Monachus faces the danger of entanglement in fishing tools and nets and the competition for resources, for example the competition for space in the sea where Monachus Monachus can move. Uh, it also faces the disturbance by fishery operation, the reduction of food resources because of over overfishing and the habitat degradation. Let's now see some basic information concerning the historical interaction between Monachus Monachus and the human coastal communities of the Mediterranean. In ancient history, seals were considered as either sacred animals or beasts, as we learn through myths. People used to exploit them for skin, fuel, oil, meat, and for medical reasons. In the early history, the development of fissure techniques supported seal hunting, which led to the decline of seal population. So, during medieval times, several countries reported the extinction of Monachus Monachus. 
In the 20th century, the first steps for the protection of monachus, monachus were made, especially through national and international legislations. In the 21st century, there are plenty of action plans for the conservation of monachus monachus. Monachus monachus is nowadays reported only as accidental capture, as the seal hunting is now prohibited. Of course, these steps for the conservation of these species were supported, especially through awareness campaigns concerning Monachus Monachus. Some references in order for you to gain extra knowledge follow, and in any case, do not hesitate to ask me for further information or sources. Thank you.